Good evening. About a year ago, I posted a video tutorial on how to research historical temperature and precipitation data using the Environmental Center for in Environment, the Environmental National Center for Environmental Information, excuse me, the NCEI. And in that time, the website has been revamped. Um, so that tutorial is sort of obsolete. So I'd like to go ahead and update it. The good news is that the website's now more user friendly. So there are two, two good tools that we can use for researching this data. And this data is really useful for planning backpacking trips. Uh, temperature, and his, temperature and precipitation data drive decisions about, mostly about uh, clothing, sleep system, shelter. And they'll, they can also help you schedule trips too, because you can identify times of year that are um, relatively comfortable or not comfortable. So let's just jump into it. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and walk you through what to do. Okay, so the NCEI is a division of NOAA. So if you search for NOAA NCEI, it will come up. And I'll give you the exact link that I'm gonna drill down to, but I just wanna show you how to access it. And uh, I think it's worth, so you go to products, go to climate monitoring, go to US climate normals and brings up this page here. It's worth reading this introductory information. I think it is useful context for understanding where this data comes from and how they collect it. I'll let you do that on your own. So there are two tools. One is quick access, the other is full access. If you can get the data through quick access, that's gonna be your best bet. So go ahead and launch it. I'm gonna pull it up in a new window. The, our first trip this year is in Southern Utah in Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument and, Nash, and Glen Canyon National Recreation Area. So I'll go ahead and start with that location. And it's like, well, hey, you know, all these, all these our operating area is near the town of Escalante. Does Escalante pull up in this quick access? And sure enough, it does. Click on Escalante. And this is, gives me the monthly averages. So over the course of the year, January to December, it gives it, me, gives it to me in a chart form, it gives it to me in a graph. I can also select the daily. And our trips are at the end of April. So um, I can scroll down and I can see that the average high is on the 23rd of April, 67. Average low is 36. Average is 51. Uh, you, another thing you can do is you can click on, you can get this data as a PDF. And this data is, uh, the PDF is nice because um, you can, uh, you can save it for your own records. But um, one little thing that it will give you for the daily, it will give you a chance of precip every day. So you can see if there are major trends one way or the other. So for example, in Colorado, in the month of July, you'll see the chance of precip rise pretty dramatically because you're entering the monsoon, monsoon season, which peaks right around August 1st. In Southern Utah, at this time of the year, there's really no change, March, April, May. Uh, you start, as you get out of winter, it drops pretty quickly um, from 17% to 12. Um, at the very bottom is this one. Um, that is the rounded number of precipitation per month. If you look though at the chart, like the um, the monthly chart, it'll give it to you in um, hundredths of inches, which is a little bit more useful because on that on that PDF, the month of May would be rounded up to one, and then in April, the average precip is 0.45, and that would get rounded down to zero. And that, which is a little less, less useful. The, the actual difference between April and May is, is insignificant relative um, versus zero and one. Okay, so this is quick access. If you can get your data this way, um, go for it. So a couple other locations for us this year, Great Sand Dunes, that will pull up, Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve. Um, if your trip is in Yosemite, you might be able to find the Tuolumne Ranger Station, okay? Or in Sequoia Kings Canyon National Park, might find Lodgepole. Some locations, though, you're going to struggle. So um, if you, there aren't weather stations near the location. So for example, uh, our trips in the Brooks Range are sort of centered in the area of Anaktuvik Pass. When I search for Anaktuvik, nothing comes up. So it's like, well, like, um, what am I going to do? And what you're going to do is you're going to go to full access and start with the daily. If you need to, you can go back later and look at monthly. But I think if you can, we can grab the daily data, that would be better. I usually just start searching for weather stations by using this map. 
And I'll scroll up here to the Central Brooks Range and in Iktivik Pass, this is a native village on the Continental Divide at about 3,000 feet. It's right here. So I'm looking for weather stations that are kind of anywhere in this area. So I'll just do a big box and see what I find. Now it gives you this list, Wiseman, Chandler Lake, Chandler Shelf, the Adigan Pass, Coldfoot. But if you are unfamiliar with this part of Alaska, you have no idea where these areas are. And some of the, um, the station names also might not be that descriptive or helpful. So you can click on map view and we'll actually show you exactly where these weather stations are. Inactivic Pass is here. So the weather stations that are sort of closest and that are most relevant because they're similar, similar elevation, it's Chandler Shelf and also Adigan Pass. So I can go back to my list view and let me see what data I have available. So our trips are at the end of June, beginning of July. So I'll just do the daily data for June. Let's see what we come up with. Okay, so it's giving me maximum and minimum temperatures per day, which is helpful. Um, so I think our first trip this year is the 23rd or something. So 61 degrees is a high, 43 degrees is a low. This is for an elevation of 3,200 feet. So that in the Brooks Range, that's relevant information. But it doesn't give me uh, it doesn't give me any precipitation data. It's not telling me chance of precip, but it's also not giving me the average for the for the month. Or so let me see if adding and pass has anything different. Sweet. Okay, and adding and pass is actually just the opposite. So it has no temperature data, but it's giving me chance of precip. So um, thirty six to forty five. Um, it's increasing throughout the month, and it's three inches of rainfall per um, per month. And I can actually go back to my quick access. And this will give me a little bit more data. So I can see that sort of the precipitation at Edigan Pass actually peaks in August. Um, so August would be a relatively rainy month if you're planning a trip in the Brooks Range. And then that other location, Chandler Shelf. It's Chandler, I think. There we go. Uh, this is only giving me precipitation or temperature data. So between the two of those, though, it's very useful to where we're going to be running our trips. Okay, so there it is. Quick access, full access. You got the two tools. Um, the NCEI website is really powerful. Um, it will take you a little while to, though to get in there and play around with it and grab the data that you're looking for. Totally worth it. If you have any questions, uh, send us a comment through Google Classroom or an email. Uh, and then if you're watching this video on YouTube, you can also put a comment in there. Thanks. Bye-bye.